Kumo Sta. I'm laying over in Manila for the next 18 hours to see its famous parks, many of its spectacular cathedrals, its historical district, the defense fortress, and the world oldest Chinatown. Not to mention sampling all the inexpensive and tasty food and getting around on a budget. All done under $40. Anything I can do, you can do. Founded in 1571, Manila is one of the oldest cities in the Philippines and was the seat of the power for most of the country's colonial rulers. Today, tourism is a vital industry in Manila and welcomes approximately over a million tourists each year. <laughs> Manila is notorious for traffic jams and long taxi lines, and this is not a joke. Hello well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Manila International Airport. As you can see, you guessed it, we are not waiting for a concert or a rock star to show up. And we are lining up with the meter taxis here. They are yellow colored. I have a feeling this wait is going to turn into a three hour and another one hour to get there. So I don't think I'm able to cover any night scenery tonight, but we're going to keep our fingers crossed. Therefore, I recommend only do a layover if you have at least 14 hours between flights. The least expensive option for getting from the airport to the city is using a combination of public bus and jitneys outside the sidewalk for approximately 60 cents. But I don't recommend given time is valuable for layovers. But the link is below for those of you who are adventurous enough to try it out. We'll begin our journey from Makati, one of the 16 cities that made up Metro Manila and the financial center of the Philippines. It's also surrounded by budget hostels and this is why be resting for the night. Let's start our morning with some breakfast. I recommend you try some freshly pre-cut fruits, but if that's not enough, consider trying out the fresh juices, various dumplings and sausages. They all cost under 50 cents. Given the traffic situation, I recommend you use MRT metros whenever possible. Its fare is based on distance between 30 cents to 75 cents. However, you can use Jitneys to reach most stations. The fare ranges between 8 to 12 Filipino pesos. All of the attraction we'll have visited today will be a walking distance from the United Nations metro station. And this is where we're gonna get off. Our first attraction is only 10 minutes walk from the station and is one of the largest urban parks in Asia. The Rizal Park is named after the national hero Jose Rizal who was executed on the site during 1896 Philippine Revolution against Spain. It's also the site of Declaration of Philippine Independence from the United States held in July 4, 1946. The 31 meter Philippine flagpole is called Kilometer Zero because it's where the distance of the country's town and cities are measured from. So this is a Rizal Park and it's a, it's a large park with different other small uh, gardens such as a Japanese garden on that side is the artist garden on this side and various other kind of attractions here. And um, so given the amount of time we have, we're going to continue on to the next place. As you get closer to intramurals, you see more gardens, but given our limited time, we continue on to his main gate. Taken from the Spanish, intra and mural literally means within the walls. This is the history town of the Philippines and considered as the old Manila itself during the Spanish times. The construction of the defensive wall was started by the Spanish colonial government in the late 16th centuries to protect the city from foreign invasion. It was heavily damaged during the battle to recapture the city from the Japanese Imperial Army during World War II. Reconstruction of the wall was started in 1951. Located within the Holy St. Augustine Church where you can confess your sin. This is the only building in the intramurals that survived the Battle of Manila at the end of World War II. This is the St. Angustine Church, it's the oldest church in the Philippines and the construction actually started in 1587 so it's have a really long rich history throughout the eras. It's a Roman Catholic church under the auspice of the Order of St. Angustine and one of the four Philippine churches constructed during the Spanish colonial period to be designated as a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. Made of bamboo and nipa, it was completed in 1571 but destroyed by fire during the attempted invasion of Manila. A second wooden structure built on the same site was destroyed in the February of 1583 by a candle during the funeral procession for the Spanish governor. 
<laughs> if you've got more sins to confess, don't worry. Just three minutes walk is another important Roman Catholic site, the Manelas Cathedral. The cathedral was originally a parish church owned and governed by the Archdiocese of Mexico in 1571 until it became a separate diocese on February of 1579. The cathedral was destroyed seven times, and most recently in 1880 by an earthquake which toppled its bell tower, rendering the cathedral tireless until 1958. Just few meters away is Fort Santiago, a citadel first built by the Spanish for the newly established city of Manila. The defense fortress is part of a structure of the wall city referred to as the Intramuros. This fort is actually was constructed in 1571. And over 100 years, it went through earthquakes and invasions and wars. And it got destroyed quite a number of times. But every time, it was rebuilt and renovated. And Today, its fort, its bastions, and the prison dungeons for criminals used by the Spanish officials is now a part of a historical park along with civil ruins. The park houses well-preserved legacies from the Spanish colonial period, including memorabilia of Jose Rizal at the Rizal Shrine, a replica of his ancestral house. Including our missions for the Fort Santiago is including access to a shrine for a museum dedicated to Rizal. He's actually a very common figure that was executed back in 1800 for by the Spanish for his anti-colonial uh, stance. Our next attraction is located right across the river, but I'm not going anywhere until I fill up with some inexpensive street food. For less than 50 cents, you can try the scoop barbecue pork on a stick, as well as I saw made from chicken intestines and ate made from chicken liver. There's also freshly cooked fish balls. After snacking, it's time to take a jitney right across the Pasit River to Bernardo, a district in Manila and home to the world's oldest Chinatown. My mom is home called Jeepney. And it's basically a jeep with a seat in the back and a cover. Founded in 1594, the area has already been a hub of Chinese commerce even before the Spanish colonial period. The Banana was created by Spanish governor as a permanent settlement for the Chinese immigrants who converted to Catholicism. Before World War II, Banada was a center of a banking and financial community which included insurance companies, commercial banks and other financial institutions from Britain and the United States, and was nicknamed the Wall Street of the Philippines. And one thing that's really surprising is you can get basically everything that, uh, from mainland China, including accessories, jewelry, and most importantly, I like food. Today, it's home to many Buddhist temples, the annual Chinese Lunar New Year celebration, and newcomers, or Sanglei, people with pure Chinese ancestry settling in this area. As my layover comes to an end, my solution for my hungry stomach comes in form of a quick bite at the local fast food joint. The Filipinos love anything that's deep fried, so I've chosen to try their fried chicken with rice, soup, and drink. I also got to try out their marinated fried fish with rice and salad. Both combos cost approximately $2. What a deal! But for those of you who want something more Western, there's Wendy's. So what I order is macaroni, Side salads and also chicken saffron. I return to the airport the same way by taxi. Make sure to only use meters or else you'll be overcharged. The ride should cost more than $4.50 or 225 Filipino pesos. Once again, if you dare, jitneys and public bus are available for 60 cents combined. With that being done, I hope you enjoy your time in Manila. Don't forget to like, share, comment on this video, and subscribe to our channel. Connect with us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram. Have a pleasant flight and thanks for watching.